Hello, I'm Rachel Piper. Welcome to my channel, Size Diverse Pilates, where I'm trying to make Pilates more accessible to the larger population. Today, we're going to do a mixed levels flow. We're just gonna, it's gonna have a little bit of level one, level two, level three. All of it, hopefully, will be accessible to most. If not, I will try and give you a substitution because there are always things in uh, level one that we can practice over and over again. So if it's not accessible to you right now, don't worry, I will give you something to do instead. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with, uh, well, you can start with three to four springs. Headrest is up, four footwork, foot bar is up. Lie yourself back. And as you're here, I want you to feel comfortable. So if headrest needs to be down for you, go ahead and take it down so that you feel like you have space in your neck and your chest. And then options always, if you can't get the arms onto your carriage is to maybe grab a pull and press the pull down and then reach the knuckles away to open you up. I'm gonna go ahead and use this today just so that you can see what it looks like. Then we're gonna start in Pilates V, heels together, toes apart. You're on the balls of your feet and your toes are lightly touching the foot bar, but you're not gripping with the toes. Heels up about an inch, stays up as you press out and come back in. And you're thinking about lifting up through the crown of the head, getting nice and tall and staying tall as you come back in for your footwork here. Nice big inhales out and exhales in. In the classical work, it's either inhale on the first movement or inhale as the spring opens, exhale as it closes. That is just a general rule. You can do whatever is comfortable for you. And you can always play with the breath. Last one here in Pilates V. Coming back in, you're gonna try and lift the feet up together and then bring you to your arches. You're right underneath the ball of the foot, maybe a little bit lower in a place where you can press in, reach the toes over and heels under at the same time. But I don't really care what your toes are doing. I mostly care that you're reaching over with the top of your foot. So you're trying to reach the ball of the foot over. The toes can kind of do whatever. Then press in like you're standing on top of, well, maybe even this pole here and then come back in. So reach out and come back in. And we have 10 of each of our footwork. This is our arches position. Again, you can play with that breath. As you go out, if you tend to hyperextend the knees, make sure you keep a soft bend in it. Nice big inhale and exhale in. Staying nice and tall, reaching. You have the pull, you're just slightly pressing down, opening up the shoulders, but nothing too crazy. Last one. Come in, and then I'm just gonna remove the pull just so people can see it without the pull here. I'm gonna press in. We're gonna come up to the heel. So place the heels on, reach the toes up toward the ceiling. Keep them there. You're opening up the ankle space. Reach the toes up again, ankle space closes. Inhale out, exhale in. You're thinking that you're standing against a wall the whole time. Reach and pull in. Reach and pull in. There are other variations of the heels footwork. If you like one of those better, you can definitely play with that. This one's interesting because as you go out, you have to allow your ankle space to open, really think that you're pressing into a wall. And then as you come back in, you have to actively pull those toes into yourself, which just gives it a little bit of a different feeling through the ankles and the legs. So two more here, reach out and come back in. Now we're going to come down to the balls of the feet. We're in parallel position here for this one. Lift the heels up, press out. You stay out. Think about getting really long right here. Lift the heels really long. You're standing on the ball of your foot like you're trying to reach up and grab something from a nice high shelf. Then you're just going to lower the heels back down. You got what you needed. You came down. Oh, you need something else. So you're going to reach up, 
and then you're gonna bring the heels back down because you got what you needed. So just think about it that way. You're lifting and lowering. Lift and lower. Reach through those feet. Try and really work through the whole foot. Maybe nice soft bend in the knee here if you tend to hyperextend. And really soft. It doesn't have to be a super bend. Um, it's just a nice soft bend. Last one, reach up, then fully bend the knees to come in. Then from here, you can transition to put your foot bar, foot, foot bar down, take the legs long, and I'm gonna play with a couple of different positions here. You can drop springs if you need to. You can do your regular 100. Otherwise, I'm gonna do legs nice and long, and I see that they're, my feet are off camera right now. Um, heels together, toes apart is what I'm doing. I'm gonna inhale and bring everything down on my exhale. So nice big inhale. Arms come down, everything else comes up, and then you're inhaling for five and exhaling for five here. So I'll play with leg position here a little bit. So we can reach the legs up if that's accessible for you. You can pull the legs in, but when you pull them in, I really want you to think that you're pulling in and then trying to pull the chest up. You can reach your arms back here. You can come up, inhaling for five and exhaling for five, and you can lower. You're only gonna wanna lower as much as your low back doesn't pop off the mat. if your head is down, okay? And then you can always come to that reaching position coming up in the upper ab curl, trying to reach through the chest and not the neck. Last one. Then everything comes down, you can pull in. I'm gonna hook my straps up because I have something going on in my shoulder. And as we come up, we're gonna drop down to just two two springs for our coordination. So go ahead and lay back down. So you're only on two springs, which is nice. Bring your arms up. Top part of your arm comes down, fingers point up. From here, we come into an upper up curl. We stay in the upper up curl the entire time, okay? So you're here, you're gonna inhale, everything goes out. Open, close the legs, pull the legs in. Stay in the upper up curl, pull the arms in. Four more, reach out, open, close, pull the legs in, pull the arms in. Nice big inhale, open, close, exhale legs, exhale arms. Two more. Last one. Go ahead and bring that down. So that's our coordination. And what I see a lot is that when people bring their legs in and their arms in, their head goes down. Um, in the classical work, we keep it up the whole time. So that's just something to play with. If you like to go up and back, you can play with that as well. But for this one, staying up and keeping yourself up helps you when you get to your backstroke on long box. So this is where you build strength for that particular exercise. Let's do a swan prep. <clears throat> One spring, foot bar is gonna come up. You're gonna grab your long box. Headrest will come down. I'm gonna get my bar out of the way as well. Remember, I don't edit these. <laughs> so <laughs> I try not to edit any of them. Okay, you're also probably gonna need a pad. So depending on how, um, how slidey your pants are, you might want one for this one. So swan prep, a little bit of arm work here. So you're gonna come onto the box, try not to hit your mouth or your head. When you come in, I'm geared all the way in right now. Hands come to that foot bar. You're gonna reach over so you have a nice straight wrist. Head is in a plank leg position. You're gonna press out. I'm on one heavy spring. From here, I'm gonna pull my arms onto my back as I lift my forehead eyes, nose, heart forward, sort of lifting the legs up just a little bit, but not much. And then I'm going to come down. So I'm going to push myself down with my center, not my arms, and then bend the arms in. 
four more like that. Press out, pull your arms onto your back, reach your head and chest forward. Opposition, toes are reaching away. Then pull yourself down with your center, then bend the arms in. Three more, we can do them a little bit faster. Reach out, swan up, come down and then bend the arms. I'm laughing because in my head I said swan down and then come out, reach up into your swan, come down, bend the arms in. Last one, reach out, arms to back as you lift your head and chest, toes working in opposition, reaching away, pull yourself down with your center and then bend the arms to come in. As you come in, you can put your foot bar down. We're gonna come the other way for our T-pull. We're gonna skip pull straps and we're gonna go into T-pull. So we were just here and press ourselves up. Now we're gonna take our arms out to a T and pull ourselves back into a swan this way. So one spring, I have one heavy on. Um, honestly, if you're just starting, one light is good. So you're gonna bring yourself down to the end of your short strap. From here, you're in a plank-like position and your arms are straight out of your shoulders. You're thinking about maybe even doing a thumbs up to keep the palms pointed down toward the floor. From here, pull back, reach into those arms and come up into your swan. So inhale, reach, exhale, come down. Actively, thumbs up and exhale down to plank. Inhale up and actively come down to that plank like position. Yeah, we only have to do three, that's it. Then we hang them up, we come off the box nice and carefully, and we're gonna play with our backstroke. So for backstroke, this is where I mentioned coordination before. If you haven't done backstroke, you can go to coordination, do your coordination if you haven't been on your back on top of the long box before. You can go back to coordination and then watch this and play around with it on the floor and eventually move yourself to the box here. But we're just gonna do the first position. We're not gonna do the reverse. So as you come on, I like to pull with my straps and then press down. You're actually gonna bring your tailbone all the way to the end. It's not teaser, you're not going anywhere. This gives you the most of your back onto your box as possible. In this, you are actively thinking that someone is pushing down and you're pulling up on those legs. So from here, knuckles are together, palms are away, reach up, come out to a V, circle down to 100, and then pull back in. Thumbs are down. Reach it up, out, long, and pull back in. Stay in that upright curl. This is why coordination is perfect for this. Not only is it a lot of choreography in coordination, two more, but it teaches you how to stay up when you're moving your arms and legs. Woo. Go ahead, drop those in, come off. You can come up nice and easy. Woo. And then we're gonna go into our long stretches series. So we're not gonna do um, our teaser today. So let's just go ahead and take the box off. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, long stretch. Headrest comes up, put your sticky pad in, and I'm gonna be on two springs. I have one that's a medium. Out of all of them, I have four heavies and one medium. I'm gonna do one heavy and one medium. I don't like doing this one on just one spring. So as we come on, we're gonna take both hands to the foot bar. We're gonna try and keep as straight as wrist as possible without sliding off the front of that foot bar. Reach one foot, so ball of foot in the crack of your headrest. Push out and come up at the same time. Now, I didn't really have to push out that much. From here, you're in a plank leg position. You're reaching your heels back and pulling yourself in with your center. I'm gonna tuck my chin a little bit. So I try and stay in a little bit of a better alignment. We're doing five, or you can hold your plank, or you can go to your down stretch, or do this kneeling. 
think that's fine. And then we're gonna come down. Take your feet down, like really push them down and reach the heels back. Hands come forward, reach the hips forward, press the heels back and come back in. So you're really pressing, I said heels, but I meant feet. Really pressing those feet back. We're gonna do five here. Traditionally we do three. Reach your heart forward the whole time. Really pull up and in, press the feet back and pull up and in. Then we're gonna sit back a little bit and come up into our elephant. We'll skip up stretch. Wherever you need to be to get your hip over your knee, over your ankle, and then be able to lift the waistband, lift the bottom ribs and keep them there. That's where you wanna be for your elephant. So if I were to move back here, it would be too hard for me to keep that back and try and lift those bottom ribs, okay? We're all different shapes and sizes. So the idea here is that I'm gonna reach my waist, waistband up and my ribs up and keep them there. Then press the heels back, pull them in without compromising my back shape. I have equal weight in my arms and my legs as I push back and pull back in. Inhale and exhale. Traditional is eight, so we'll aim for that. Push it back, pull in with your center. Lift up the waistband, bottom ribs, as you go out and as you come back in. Last one here, press into that foot bar as you come down instead of lifting up. Okay, and then we'll go to our stomach massage. We'll just do all of them. We'll just do, um, we'll do everything on two springs. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a wedge cause I'm not gonna gear up for this one. And let's just go with two heavy springs. And then we'll just do them all on two springs. That way we can just kind of fly through them. Okay, so bring the legs in and you're gonna try and get yourself onto that sacrum, which is why the wedge is so nice. That way it helps us curl and try and get those shoulders over the hips. Bring the feet up. You have a little bit of a lift in that heel and then round position. Reach it out, lower lift, come back in. We're just gonna do five here. Traditionally, I think it's maybe eight. Yeah, eight. We're just gonna do five. So reach in, keep that nice tall C-shaped spine. You're heavy in your um, your sacrum here, which it's such a light spring, it's kind of nice. Then come back in, reach your arms back however you want to. I'm just gonna pull mine back. And then arms could be here, could be up. The idea is, is that you're gonna try and reach the chest up, bring the head back, and try and get the shoulders over the hips. Same movement, you press out, you lower lift, you exhale back in. It's a super long inhale, which is really nice. And then all the evil goes out and exhale in. Last one. Now from here, you gotta reach yourself up, be in that same tall position you were just in. All we do is press out and come back in for five. Three more. Last one. Then three on each side, twist tall, come back in. Twist tall, come back in. So you're trying to be tall like spine twist. Spine twist, spine twist. Last one. And exhale in. You can take a stretch if it's there for you. Let's see if it's there for me today. You hold your bar, press your feet in and try and straighten them breath here. Whew, that is really compact for me today. Okay, let's bring it in. We're going to go to our short spine. We're on the right springs for it. So two springs. Perfect. It's like I planned it that way. Go ahead and drop that. If you dropped your handles into the well, then go ahead and pick those up. Headrest is going to come down. Here's your substitution for short spine. You're going to put your long straps on or keep your short straps on. And you're going to do um, leg presses, leg circles, frog, frog circles, 
any of that stuff, all good. I want you to keep your tailbone down and I want you to think about keeping your ribs down and you can have your head rest up if you're doing that variation. Otherwise, bring yourself down. We're gonna play with getting our feet into the straps at the same time. So you're using your short straps for this. Two springs, your shortest straps, right? So for me, I have to feed my straps through my handles to get them there. Then from here, I'm gonna grab back here and have my hands right between my loops to create some space. And then I'm gonna put my heels together and then I'm gonna pull into my straps as I lift up and put my feet in and then press my heels away. From this position here, I want to be in a place where I can really reach my tailbone down. Okay, let's just do a couple frogs together. So that's heels together, toes apart, you're in turn out. You're gonna reach away and come back in. My straps go low, if yours are higher, you might be able to go a little bit lower, but if you're on a reformer like me where it's low, then you're only gonna go as far as it touches your shoulder blocks or your body and then come back in. Okay, one more like that, out and in. Again, anyone who's not doing short spine can stick with that. Otherwise, press those arms in or maybe hold back here. Reach the legs away. Keep this midline connection as you press your head in. Yes, press it back to lift the heels up. Bring the legs over, bend in. Keep the heels there as you roll the spine down. You're trying to get as low as you can with the spine while the heels are above your face. Then pull the heels down, reach right through that midline and go back out. We'll do three more. Reach it up. You have to keep tension on your straps the whole time. Otherwise, it means that you've just lost the connection. It's okay. You can always reach out to me and ask me to take a look so I can show you or help you try and find that missing connection. Last one, press out, reach up into those straps and over. Bring those knees in. Let's do one really slow. Heels stay together, heels stay together. Reach the spine down, press the heels down and away. So you end up with that tailbone heavy at the end. Lift both straps off, hang them up, maybe. <laughs> and go all four springs on. Headrest is already down. You're gonna pick up your short box here, place it on and I'm actually going to gear out because I have longer legs. So you can put all the springs on, pull underneath the strap, makes for happy positioning of the short box. Go ahead and take the pull down from here. Really flex those feet. Make sure you have about a hand's width behind you. Maybe scooch forward a little bit if you don't. Flex the feet, pull out onto that strap and turn your butt on. Bring the hands right in front of you. I'm just gonna do a couple of round backs. Round and forward. You can make this any level that you want to. You can go into extension. I'm not going to because I know sometimes people will try and go into extension just because somebody else is. Two more. And sometimes they're just not ready for it. And maybe I'm just not ready for it today either. And round forward. Okay, I'm gonna scooch back just a little bit. A little bit around in the lumbar spine just so I can really get that flat back feeling, protect my low back. Reach the arms up wherever it needs to be. It might be here, wherever you can get your arms on your back. Take yourself nice and tall back and forward. Tall spine back, tall spine forward. Three more. Chin down a little bit. Looking forward. Reach out into that pull. One more. And up side to side so here really reaching those feet nice equal hips you're reaching up and then over so nice and tall up 
reach over, come back up. Other side. Two more each side. Turn on the butt. Last one each side. One more. Reach it up. Go ahead and take it down for a second. Stretch yourself out. We're going to do a little twist and reach. Just a little twist and reach. Okay. Reach the arms up. We're going to do a tree today. So really reach to those feet again. And again, like really turn yourself on here. So we twist first, right? Twist, then reach. Come back center. Twist first, then reach. Come back center. Twist, and maybe that's your reach right there. It's okay. Come back. Twist, reach, and come back. Last option, just a twist and come back. Twist and come back. So you can play with that the next time you do this video. Whether you twist and reach all the way back, twist, partway reach, or just twist in general, the idea is, is that we are getting rotation in that spine. No tree today, um, which if you really know me, know how much I love tree. So <laughs> I know it's probably like a miracle that we're not doing that. But let's go ahead and take this off. Come down to two springs. Bring the foot bar up. I'm gonna gear back in for my nice stretches. We're gonna do round arch round. If you wanna do knees off at the end, you can do knees off at the end. Headrest comes up for running that comes after. Press into that foot bar. Take the ball of the foot down from here. Really reach that nice straight wrist away from you. You're standing in those arms. You're gonna have a nice lifted C shape. We were already here for stomach massage. From here, press out, pull back in. We're gonna do eight, three, four, I'll count it, five, six, seven, eight. Come into the arch, just change the shape of your spine. Everything else is the same. Press back, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, come back to your round or go to your knees off. Back to one, two, I almost started with two. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on in. Add whatever you want for your, whatever you had for footwork springs on. Lie down for running. Parallel position. Again, if you need a little extra space here, grab that pole. Parallel. Come up to the balls of your feet, lift those heels, press yourself out, be nice and tall here. Nice and tall before you even start. From tailbone all the way to the top of the head, you're tall. Then you take one heel under as the opposite knee lifts. Yeah, rinse it all out. Rinse it all out. Nice and stable in the hips. More each side. Lift both heels up, bend the knees to come in. Now let's go ahead and do a little bottom lift here. Tailbone is down and I'm just going to have everybody put their headrest down just in case. Reach the arms long. Tailbone is really pointed down and then we're just going to lift like this part of the body up about a fist height and we're going to keep it there. So just lift it. Think that you're actively arching away as you press out and pull back in. Press out, pull back in. Again, we are trying to be as tall as possible here. And we have two more. Bring it in, roll the spine down, and then we're going to come into front split. Yeah. Front split, okay. Front split kneeling. So if you know Eve's lunge or what is also sometimes called scooter, you can go ahead and do that. I don't know what's going on with my hair. Um, otherwise we're gonna do kneeling front split, which then you can see um, this one's actually much more difficult for me than regular front split um, and even Eve's lunge. 
So uh, it'll be interesting. So here is what you can do. I don't have another foot bar position besides taking this all the way down. The lower the foot bar is, the more accessible this is going to be. And then just know that when you're kneeling on here and you press back, um, you might tip one way or another. So you wanna make sure you keep your hands on the whole time. Okay, so I'm gonna start just so you can see it maybe a little bit better. Um, right foot is gonna go back to the shoulder block and then I'm gonna reach this leg up. I'm trying to get it dead center in and typically you're on the ball of your foot. Um, you might need to go to the arch of your foot though. Then from here, you're actively pressing away with that front leg and then coming back in. I don't think I took my stopper out, but that's okay. So you press out and then come back in. So my chest is resting here on my leg. We're gonna do five as we press back and forward. And then we're gonna come in and then we'll just take that leg down. Yep. <clears throat> so it might be good to actually put a stopper in there because if you go too far and you can't get back, you know, <clears throat> it's kind of nice to have it there. Okay, then other foot goes back. We're in a direct line here. So <clears throat> we're not, um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a frog in my throat. Uh, as you could see here, where my heel is was directly where my knee was. So same thing on this opposite side. And then one side might be tighter than the other. This is pretty high for me. And then you might also need to pad your knees. I was starting to feel it a little bit. So I need to help my leg up here to put it in the middle. And then I also need to move a little body here. This side's tighter for me, okay? From here, I'm gonna actively press out with that front leg and then pull back in. Now I'm trying to keep my heel lifted the whole time but it's difficult, so I'm just gonna let it be. We have three more, reaching it out and coming back in. If you can just get into position and hold, that's good. That's good too. I couldn't even get my leg up when I first started. Back and forward, and then go ahead and bring that down. All right. So there is our all levels workout. It really did have a good mix, I think, of level one, two, and three. I think we hit maybe, I don't know, I have like just a little sign over there that has like all the things, but I think that we hit pretty much all the level one stuff, except for maybe like circles and frogs, but you did have that as an option. And then, yeah, mix in some good level two um, and good level three. I think front split, uh, kneeling is maybe level two, but if you're working on splits in general, uh, Eve's lunge would be the substitution for your front split. And then once you're good with front split kneeling, then you can go to the hands-on version where you're standing. And then eventually you move towards hands off. But, um, you know, it took me like a couple years to even decide that I wanted to try that. So uh, you don't have to ever do any of the splits with hands off, ex except for maybe um, like your side split, but you can always have a pull. But my point here is that um, once you are, are feeling comfortable with your front split, then that's the time that you can maybe go toward trying your side split. Because your side split, you're pushing your legs out and bringing them back in and you have a very small amount on your frame. But you can always use a gondola pole here and for your side split. And I always like to tell people that if your, if your former didn't come with a gondola pole, it, which we call it a gondola pole because it's actually for the exercise called gondola, the split called gondola. But if you just didn't come with this, then you can get this at a local hardware store like really cheap, cheaper than you can order them online. Um, and then you can use like chair stoppers at the end. And that's all you really need. You can also just put like one of those um, furniture sticky pad things there that are felt and that will help you. But then you use that for your side, you can use that for your side split. 
um, while you're practicing if you don't have somebody helping you out or um, sweating you. Okay, so uh, yeah, mixed workout, mixed level reformer workout. Um, hopefully you like this workout and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm hoping to do more of these and they're just kind of a, hey, uh, I'm just going to go work out and sort of talk through it type of thing. So um, if there's something specific that you would like me to focus on or some sort of reformer theme or tower theme or something like that, then please just let me know and I can create that for you. But um, until next time, um, have fun doing accessible reformer work.